Uh, welcome to Kicking Up With Sensei. Today we're joined by Paul Ingram of the Kelly Centre in Chicago. And uh, if you'd like to give a little bit of background about yourself, Paul. Sure. Anything specific you want to you wanna know? Uh, just your history in martial arts, how you first got started. and. Yeah, I, uh, I got started in martial arts when I was a, a kid. I was about six years old. It was a little, uh, like a little... Uh, martial arts uh package in the uh, park district of my hometown yeah. went through a different name changes and all that stuff at first it was called uh, budo aikido and then they changed it to budo tai jitsu you know it's mostly just you know for the kids and just fun stuff got to learn like bear hug ex escapes and guillotine ex escapes and work with like <laughs> a little bit with weapons and uh, it was kind of cool we were working with like different bats and chains and nunchucks and all that crazy stuff fun stuff yeah but you know there was no sparring and there was no board breaking so because it, it was like through the park district so they had all this like liability stuff they had to go through mm. so i did that for a couple of years and then uh i got into taekwondo and uh i was probably around like eight years old or so eight nine years old did that for a long time um part of the demonstration team did a bunch of and that was a lot of fun breaking boards my my uh instructor at the time would have me jumping over a whole bunch of other people and doing flying side kicks through boards and stuff i put up a few pictures of that on instagram uh, a long time ago but that was a lot of fun and then um got into filipino martial arts i was introduced to that when i was 15 years old through a friend of mine and uh trained with him and his family for a number of years and after that got into jeet kune do and uh, that was uh, pretty much like a big seminar of about six years, seven years of that. Um, experimented with a lot of different Filipino martial arts. I was introduced to uh, through Jeet Kune Do, met my boxing coach, had a few grappling coaches, uh, some coaches in BJJ, in wrestling, uh, in uh, Pankration, uh, some kickboxing coaches. Uh, one of my coaches was in Savat. And I met a lot of really good teachers out of there, too. Uh, I trained with, uh, like, Paul Bunak and uh, Sipu Tom Cruise, Harender Singh, uh, Roy Harris. That's where I met Roy Harris was through uh, that training. Um, and then from there, trained a lot with Pekiti Tersha, Tim Wade. Did a lot of that for a number of years. And uh, finally, it was, you know, I'm like, I'm done with all the organization stuff. And I just want to continue my own path and keep growing my own way and that's yeah. what I'm doing today. You've done everything really, so just a lot. Just a lot. I'm kind of like myself yeah. now, but uh, I've only recently discovered Kelly and following yourself on YouTube and it's, it's very interesting. But uh, I've noticed a lot of Filipino martial arts are armed with sticks and knives. Is there any unarmed combat in the Filipino martial arts? Yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole area of it. So in Kali, the way that we teach it, there's 12 areas of Kali. And uh, one of those areas is the empty hands. Now, the way that we look at it here at Kali Center is that everything is a weapon. Yeah. So, it, you know, the, how we look at it is we're not a weapon-based art. We are a weapon art. So our hands become weapons. It's like a stick. Is A stick is not a weapon until you make it a weapon. Yeah. Right? A knife is just a utility tool until you turn it into a weapon. You know, it's kind of like the whole alchemy thing, right? You turn lead into gold. That's the same idea. You're, you're taking anything and you're turning it into gold, right? You're turning it into an asset as far as, you know, function, functionability for you know, self-protection or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we look at our empty hands in the exact same way. You know, this is just a hand, you know, you eat with it, whatever you do with it, but it becomes a weapon when you have that training and you understand how to use it. All mm -hmm. of the empty hand training in Kali it derives off of the principles and the movements of the weaponry. And so the power, the speed and the power of our empty hands is developed through the impact weaponry training. And then the precision and the accuracy of the empty hands is developed through the knife work. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, what's the difference between Kelly, Eskrima and Arnis? Is there any that is, uh, you know, that's, that's like an age old question. I know a lot of people are into that question and, um, 
a lot of people will have different answers for that. Some people will say Kali is like the blade art. It's like the mother blade art. And then Screamo is more sticks and stuff like that. To be honest with you, out of all the research and training I've done and uh, the different styles I've experimented with, there's no difference. It's just different yeah. terminologies for the same thing. Um, every style of Filipino martial arts is different. Some focus on the blade, some focus on the sticks, some focus on bolos, some focus on knives, some focus on the grappling of it, you know? So yeah. some focus on specific ranges and it all just falls underneath the umbrella. So some people will say that it's the different terms are regional based within the Philippines. The most common term in the Philippines that people are going to recognize is Arnis. Um, Escrima is pretty, is pretty recognizable. Kali was kind of newer. So we don't, you know, it's hard to really pinpoint where the real word Kali came from. A lot of people say, you know, it's the oldest term. There's, there hasn't been any text or anything actually found in the Philippines with Kali being like an actual term of describing a martial art that kind of started coming up around like the 1950s and stuff. And, um, I think what it was is that when you look at the terms Arnis and Escrima, these are Spanish in origin. Yeah. You know, Arnis and uh, Esgrima, which is fencing and swordsmen or arms. So I think some, some Filipinos wanted to have some sort of terminology that was uh, being able to just kind of be their own pure Filipino terminology. And Kali was kind of born out of that. Yeah. You know, so now I know like the Philippine Force Recon Marines, they use the term Kali. Uh, I'm sure that was influenced by uh, Leo Tigahi of Pekiti Tersha. You know, he, yeah. before Pekiti Tersha Kali, it was Arnis. It was Pekiti Tersha Arnis yeah. you know, a long time ago. And then he changed it to Pekiti Tersha Kali. Um, I think that they have the right to do that. You know, if they don't want to have that Spanish origin, you know, tied to them anymore, I think they have that right to, uh, you know, change that terminology. But you know, you got the politics around it and some people agree with it and some people don't agree with it. And just like everything that is new in a, in a day and age, you know, That's it. there's a lot of politics and everything now, but, um, you went down and uh, opened the Kelly center then, which must be, well, it's a few years back now. What's made you make a decision to kind of set up on your own and kind of start this, this journey? Training, man. I, I just, I wanted to train the way I wanted to train. Um, I wanted to get away from the politics within Filipino martial arts. It's deep. It's nasty. It's pointless. It doesn't do anybody good. Um, you know, the, the only, the people that the politics and all that hurt the most is the students, the practitioners that just want to mm -hmm. train. You know, I just wanted to train, you know, and, and I wanted to be able to have that freedom to explore other things you know, and uh, different martial arts and, and see how that integrates into the system of things and find these different similarities and just kind of do things in my own way, you know, my own expression without somebody, you know, checking up on me and, and being like, oh, you can or you cannot do that. I'm like, are you kidding, dude? This is this is 2020. You know, at the time it was and it was 2014. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's 2014. You know, we're here in the free world, don't tell me what I can and cannot do, you know? So it was just kind of wanting to do our, you know, do our own thing, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. branch out. Um, so I had before Kali Center, it was RFA Marshall Academy. Yeah. And then when we launched Kali Center, it was about a month of brainstorming. Tom and I would just, after class, we would stand in front of the dry erase board until like one or two in the morning, trying to brainstorm, like what's this, you know, next thing that we can do. And it really came out of because I was getting a lot of uh, emails and messages from people that were following me through my RFA Marshall Academy and uh, Windy City PTK when I was involved in uh, Pikiti Tertia. And they would be emailing me and messaging me about, you know, I want to train Kali. How do I get involved in Filipino martial arts? I don't have a teacher in my area. I don't have a school in my area. And I'm like, well, we need to provide like a service because I've been getting these emails for a couple of years. And I'm like, nobody, nobody has taken upon themselves to start providing this service for people. Yeah. And, um, you know, I started responding to people's emails and they would like respond back to me like, holy, holy cow. I can't believe like you responded back to me. And I'm like, how many, how many emails have these people around the world sent out to other, you know, Filipino martial arts teachers 
and just never got a response back. I'm like, yeah. and I looked at my, my, uh, well, my staff guy, Tom, student of mine, training partner of mine. And I'm like, you know, this is kind of BS that these people are just kind of being left out, you know, yeah. like, why can't just, just because they live on some, you know, crazy Island, you know, now they have internet access or whatever, like they should be able to train too. So that's where Collie Center, you know, that idea is where Collie Center was born out of. Yeah. It's really opened it up here in Ireland too. It's, I think I spent about 10 years trying to find somewhere where I could learn it and could find nowhere. I've yeah. done, in other martial arts, I've done a few wee Eskrima drills and that's it. Maybe about 10 drills that were just repeated throughout other martial arts, but it's great to actually have finally been able to do it online and even bring it into my own clubs and things like that. So it's fantastic. Yeah, it's hard to find something that is just a pure Filipino you know, martial arts focus. You know, a lot of schools that they have Filipino martial arts involved, but, you know, they're doing a lot of other things, too. Yeah. Um, so when I opened up my school originally, we were a pure Filipino martial arts school, you know, and um, it was hard, man. You know, yeah. Kali is a hard thing to sell, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, uh, not, especially when not a lot of people know about it. So part of Kali Center was to promote Filipino martial arts as a whole, not like a particular style system teacher or anything. Part of it is just to get, you know, people get traffic to the idea of Filipino martial arts to get it more known out there. Yeah. And hopefully all these other clubs and, you know, teachers that want to focus on Filipino martial arts, hopefully Kali center is doing their part to help them, you know, get new practitioners. You know, yeah. people are finding Kali center on YouTube and Instagram and, and all those things. And, yeah, they might want to train some of our online stuff, but at some point, you know, they want to do some in-person stuff yeah. and they want to do it on a regular basis. You know, I don't have schools everywhere. You know, we have chapters that are now starting to pop up in places where we can't find Filipino martial arts schools. That's where we're bringing our chapters up in. Yeah. You know, if we're like, you know, if somebody is in Sacramento, California, well, you know, there's Filipino martial arts out there. So, that's an area for Kali Center, you know, I'm not interested in opening up a chapter over there, yeah. right? Because I don't want to, I'm not looking to compete with other people's businesses. I, I don't want to fight, you know, my peers of Filipino martial arts. I want all of them to be successful. Yeah. So, that, you know, that's what we're, now we're looking at opening up chapters where it's not really available to make it available. Yeah. And you have just launched a new Kali Center, Apex, program yeah could you talk more about that maybe and yeah so the the college center apex is our new program um and what you know i've been teaching online for a number of years now i mean pretty much a little bit before college center i started testing like how to teach online and um i did a little um like private website for my students back in chicago yeah. And uh, I'm like, you know, let's see if people would, you know, be interested in this. And a lot of them started jumping on that, you know, help business-wise, because it was a little bit of an upsell. Um, but they really started enjoying that because they're like, you know, sometimes if they couldn't make it to class or during the week they had questions or they wanted to study a drill a little bit deeper, they had access to the lessons, right? And so it really worked out. And then in uh, 2000, January of 2015 is when I launched our first version of Kali Center Online School. And uh, we got a lot of people that signed up to it right away. But in my mind, it's just, it wasn't good enough. You know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be able to deliver the best service, the best resource for, you know, training, especially the distance training and all that. Because we have people that are training with us from all around the world that have no access to a teacher or a school. Yeah. You know, the only access they have is, is internet. Um, and so with Kali Apex is just the evolution of us, you know, throughout the years of just our own uh, trial and error and experience, kind of putting everything together and really formulating the best distance training curriculum that we can. So it's a step-by-step -step building blocks progression we, it's kind of broken down into two sections. We have our Kali Apex course, which is our basic training course. And it's designed to take you from zero to flow. So if you know little to nothing about Kali, that's a great place to start. It starts you off at the very, very beginning. And there's a lot of solo training in that. And then we kick into the partner drills and we start building, you know, how to navigate with the footwork, 
how to start applying tactics, understanding meeting the force, following the force, and how to actually apply tactics and techniques to those two flows. And then we progressively build you all the way into the different sparring methods. So we have a majority yeah. of uh, different types of sparring methods that are training methods that we use. And we teach two different types of training methods of the traditional way of training Kali, where it's just basically your sticks and you don't have any like you know gloves and masks on. Yeah. So we teach you the traditional way of training. And then we also you know do the variations of the drills with the more modern you know, hockey gloves and, and all that stuff. Um, so you can get a really good, a good look at how these things apply. Um, but we, we teach it both ways because we don't want, you know, if, if you were training with, you know, you get together with a training partner and you don't have the gloves and the masks and all that, that shouldn't stop you from training. That shouldn't stop you from the ability to still build skills that you can train at, you know, real speed, real time, real pressure. Yeah. You just have to have the right training methods so that you can do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the first part of it is our basic training program. And then we also have the Kali apex continuum, which is our membership. And that's the continued training. So from there, we can take your skills from beginner to advance. And we're building a whole new continuum training library that's available for our members. Uh, I'm breaking down all 12 areas of Kali and we're putting in all the top essential skills uh, that we believe that everybody should know for all 12 areas of Kali. Every week we have tactics videos of how to apply a new tactic. Then we have another video for the technical breakdown, how you solo train to develop the technique of that tactic. We also add our Kali athletics and our Kali conditioning. So like type of fitness training and flexibility training and stuff like that to help condition your body for better, higher Kali performance. We do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of uh, Q and A's and answering people's questions. Um, but what a lot of people are really liking about the new Apex members membership is they're really starting to like our one-on-one -on -one video coaching that we opened up. Yeah. So people can schedule a private video coaching call with us. And instead of us just being your teachers, we're literally your coaches. So now you have your coaches in your pocket. Yeah. So our, our, uh, our members area is all hosted on the Patreon site, patreon.com forward slash Kali Center. So you can download the Patreon app, sign up to Kali Center, and you literally have us in your pocket no matter where you go. So if you have a question, you know, you're out training or you're out having dinner with the family and a question pops up, Right. Excuse yourself from the dinner table table, you know, go to you know the bathroom or something and yeah. just send us a quick message of your question and we'll get back to you. You know, Absolutely. or you can schedule a video coaching call and we can run through the question with you to help you, uh, you know, make any adjustments mm -hmm. for your technique to improve your technique. The other thing that a lot of our students are doing now, especially our our chapter leaders are jumping into it where, you know, with their training partners, if they're having a hard time applying a tactic they'll schedule a video coaching call with us with their training partner. And now we can walk them through the application of the tactic. So we can see what are, what, where's the error. And then we'll know, you know, exactly how to fix that. You know, we have not come across a question yet or, or like a, you know, a, a reasoning for something not to work that we have not experienced ourselves yet in mm -hmm. our training, you know, and um, we also do live stream classes about once or twice a month. We do live stream classes. And uh, with our uh, membership, we also offer discounts to our in-person training seminars and our training camps and all that stuff. Excellent. And we wanted to put this together. The Apex is really about how to deliver the best training possible to people all around the world, especially in this day and age with this you know, global pandemic going on. So people can keep training, right? And it's affordable for them. You know, it's financially fair for us, but it's very affordable for people all around the world to be able to train. Yeah. And the training is easily accessible, you know, and that's really what we wanted to, uh, to build. And it's, I mean, it's the best training, right? You got training, yes. you got instruction, you get coaching with it. You know, it's just, it's something I wish I had, you know, 20 years ago when I was starting my Filipino martial arts, you know? Yeah, I'm actually getting quite jealous now with my daughter. I started following you a while back because basically looking for solo drills to do at home and mm -hmm. uh, picked up a sticks and I started learning your heaven six drill and I had no partner then to try it with. So I trained yeah. my eight-year-old daughter to do it 
And after about a month of both of us doing the drill together, she got far quicker than I did and I couldn't keep up with her. So I had to go back and pick something else to go through. Just <laughs> keep up. She's just so quick. But I suppose uh, she'd be a lot more used to technology than than I would be now at my age. But it's, uh, it's unbelievable how much they can use technology to pick things yeah, up. Yeah, but now. you can learn. You yeah, know, like, I mean, I, I, you know, the, it's one thing to use the technology. It's a whole different thing to like build all of this stuff, you know? So yeah. I didn't know anything in the beginning, you know, is this has just been a learning process of learning how technology works. So, I mean, anybody can learn it. And, you know, with, with Kali Center, what a lot of people probably don't know is that if you don't know how to use the technology, all you got to do is send us an email and we'll help you out with it. Yeah, you know, like to, to not know how to use it is especially as a martial artist, right? Like, think about as martial artists, what are we constantly doing as teachers all the time? We're solving problems. Yeah. So we should be able to solve our own problems, you know, even if it's something like we, you know, we're not good at using technology or anything like that. We can solve that problem or, you know, get a coach. We understand the importance of a teacher in it, you know, so we can do those things too and solve those problems even for ourselves, you know, and, and get that training. I have uh, one of my chapter leaders in Belgium. He does the same thing. He trains with uh, with his daughter. She's like nine, ten. I think she's 10 now. Yeah. Dude, she's good, man. When I was out there in Belgium uh, a year ago, I was out there. Uh, we did a little training camp. It was like a three-day training camp. And uh, I was training a little bit with his daughter. And, man, she's good, man. Nine years old. I'm like, by the time she's 20, if she keeps with it, she's, she's going to be a machine, man. No one's yeah. going to be able to touch her hand. <laughs> yeah, that's unbelievable. Kids pick things up yeah. so quick. It's yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Now, I have, uh, t- my two youngest daughters now both train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm-hmm. and then they train the Japanese Jiu Jitsu with myself. And now they both of them try and Kelly, but both of them are under 10 and they're unbelievable. And all three already, it's just so fast at picking everything up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, they're they're sponges, man, they just absorb yeah. information. Yeah. You know, and then their bodies are so flexible, so they can do anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. they don't even have to like work on, you know, developing to do the splits. They could just do them. You know. Yeah. So it's. Do you think it's going to be essential moving on in the future to have technology as a part of martial arts clubs and? and I think it's essential right now. Essential we're in the right future. Now. We're we're in the future, right? I mean, think yeah. about if, if there if it wasn't for the technology. How much training, especially in Filipino martial arts, how much training would people be doing right now? Absolutely. You know, schools have shut down all over all over the world, right? So if it wasn't for YouTube, which is basic technology, you know, how would we continue yeah. training? How would we continue communicating with each other without these social media platforms, you know, as martial arts yeah. to be able to support each other's training? So it's not so much that the future is right now. What martial artists, especially martial arts school owners and teachers, what they need to do is they need to catch up with the current times that are now. Yeah. You know, like uh, when I was starting my business, I had to move outside of having other martial arts school owners as my business mentors. They were so far behind the times of business. So I had to like actually go out in the world and go get real business mentors, marketing mentors, sales mentors, so I can learn business stuff. Like I didn't have any business education before this stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and that that's kind of my biggest thing is like we're in the future that we're thinking of right now. Yeah, you know, so that. as martial artists, we got we just gotta get with it. It's kind of yeah. like Last Samurai. Have you ever seen that movie with, with uh Tom Cruise, Last that's Samurai? Nice. <laughs> you know, where it's like those the samurai didn't want to let go of their traditions and all that. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like that, you know, like the world is gonna keep progressing forward and martial artists, you know. I don't know why, but we choose to like remain as dinosaurs. Yeah. That means eventually as martial arts is going to go extinct if we have that mentality, right? Dinosaurs mm-hmm. are extinct. So if you don't want you to go extinct as a martial artist, especially as a teacher or as a, as a school, if you're using it to support your family or anything, mm-hmm. you can't be thinking like a dinosaur, you know, you got to get in the times with evolution. You know, it's, we're moving forward. Definitely. And uh, if you hadn't have went with Cali and spent your life learning and teaching that what other martial art do you think you would have fell under your family fencing would have been fencing fencing yeah i'm not i'm not really you know my my thing is weapons has always been my my largest fascination especially edged weapons 
So, uh, I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't stumble across Kali, like I kind of came across Kali on, on mistake. Like my friend and I were wrestling around and in my front living room and stuff. And, uh, he was just like, Hey man, if you like martial arts, you should come, you know, see what like we do, you know? Mm. And that's kind of how I stumbled on Filipino martial arts. Um, otherwise I would have just kept fencing. You know, and I would have just started, like, just kept investigating different fencing styles. I still do that nowadays, you know. So mm-hmm. a lot of the Kali, a lot of the training that we do, I mean, it's kind of almost unfair to kind of call it Kali nowadays because we, we do integrate, at least I integrate, a lot of my other research and experience in other weapon-based and weapon martial arts. Yeah. Um you know, different fencing styles, you know, Spanish fencing, Italian fencing, a lot of other things that we study outside of our Kali practice. Because mm-hmm. um, it's got a lot of great information, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, why wouldn't you do that? You know, if it was, I mean, if it wasn't that, then I probably would have, um, you know, or, or I wouldn't be training in martial arts at all. I would just probably be hiking the world. <laughs> that's, that's probably what I would be doing, you know. That doesn't my sound my other thing idea. besides, yeah, my other thing besides training is I just you know I I like being outside. Like every time I train, I'm outside just training. So it's I want to spend out time outside, and you know that's that'd be the other thing I'd probably be doing if it wasn't collie or fencing. And uh, you said you've always been drawn towards weapons, but would you have a favorite weapon to use? Um, I my favorite weapon to train, if I had to pick one, would be the short spear. Mm. um you know the spear is just it's a challenging weapon it's so simple and that's what makes it so difficult especially when you're when you're sparring with people um it's just hard man it it really takes a high level of athleticism and skill development to really get proficient with the spear on that like one versus one yeah um you know, there's so much leverage to it. It's so fast. It's sneaky. You know, there's there's aspects of the bolo to it. There's aspects of the knife to it. Um, you know, it's you have to be very, very meticulous on your footwork and your pacing of your footwork to finally control range. And you have to really identify the slight breakings of timing. And, you know, in martial arts, it's, it's really uh, like a big thing is telegraph, 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 like don't telegraph. But with the spear, you can telegraph something in a way where you're using the telegraph as trickery. Yeah. And it's you have to have such a fine eye and notice these tiny little shifts. I mean, it's it gets very, very complicated and deep, you know, but the movements yeah. are so simple. Uh, but if the technique, if the form isn't there, the leverage falls apart so quickly. If it's not, you know, even if you're if you're off alignment just by a few centimeters, you lose so much leverage, you know, especially if your training partner is very precise on their technique. You know, so the spear is just it's very uh, it's powerful, but at the same time, it's delicate. So it's a perfect balance of like yin and yang and uh, training with the spear as much as I, I love it and much as that I do it it has really enhanced all the areas of Kali for me, like all my performance. And that's really what got me into a lot of um, investigating how do I increase my own physical athletics, you know, getting more into calisthenics and kettlebells and wrist and grip development exercises and uh, forearm endurance and stuff like that, because the spear will wear you out fast. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And, uh, what advice would you give someone starting out in Cali now and taking the, the dive on it? Um, don't worry about any fancy training gear. Just grab whatever you can find that you have around, you know, just to get started. Um, and just, uh, you know, experiment with different styles and different teachers until you kind of find the one that you click with. Yeah. Um, and don't just settle for, for any teacher. Qualify your teacher. Look for, you know, is the, does the teacher have a well put together curriculum? Do they have a put together training continuum that, you know, like this is going to fit with what your wants are from your training? Do they have open communication? Can you get a hold of your teacher? You know, can you talk to them? Can you ask them questions? Maybe even get into some debates during training with them. Are they going to actually train with you? 
or are they just going to kind of tell you to do a drill and then, you know, you see them kind of sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure that you are around the people that are really going to support your training and the people that are going to, uh, you know, they're going to be there for you. It's not just learning from them, but they're going to be able to coach you and pull you yeah. up with them. Um, find those one or two true mentors Forget about everybody else. I mean, you can kind of peek and learn from everybody else, but take those one or two, maybe three at the most and study deep with them, you know, and just kind of have that become your mastery, at least for like five years or, you know, 10 years or something like that. And then you can always switch or whatever, you know, yeah. things like that. Um, Kali is a good additional art. You know, you can train it solitary just by itself and you'll get really good at it but it's also a good complementary art with other arts that you're doing so if you are training brazilian jiu-jitsu if you're training judo like we i have a lot of students that train with me that train judo we have a lot of international competitor judo people that train with us yeah um we have a lot of grapplers that train kali with us a lot probably more grapplers than we actually have strikers that train kali with us and um it, it it allows them, and this is from their saying, I'm not, you know, this is their words and from their experience of training with us, it opens up an entire new way of them seeing the grappling world, especially when it comes to the process of takedowns and countering takedowns because of the footwork, you know, because of the speed of the Kali footwork and the ability to control range and change the range, the ability to see and pick and navigate angles and, a lot of our judo players that train with us are like, dude, I'm able to bypass a lot of the traditional like entries for judo. We've got some new pathways and it's like stumping people now. They're like, I don't know how you got there. It's like, it, it's like you teleported, you know, <laughs> so yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting the way that it complements other arts. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with some firearm instructors here in the States uh, they've taken a lot of our footwork platform and added that to their firearm stuff, especially uh, law enforcement and uh, some of our uh, students that have trained with us. They're uh, like SWAT team uh, defensive tactics yeah. instructors and things. And they've taken our footwork and used that as a shooting platform. And they're like, dude, our officers are so much more safe and they're just better performers on their job now because of the footwork. You know, the footwork is the big thing, you know. Yeah. For me, like with Kali Center, I'm not trying to like take people away from the martial arts that they're already practicing. Yeah. You know, like I don't want to take people away or anything like that. just add it because it's, it's going to make it better, you know? Yeah, definitely. And where would you like to see Cali center go in the next few years? Have you any big plans for it? Or? I want all 7.7 .7 billion people in the world training Cali center, man. <laughs> you know? Kali, Kali, Kali can change the world, man. Like there's, there's so many benefits to martial arts beyond martial arts itself. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's so many things that we're kind of neglecting and we're ignoring yeah. as, as just people and uh, an evolving society globally that martial arts, man, you, you just, you get things, you know, virtues and values and, you know, ethics and etiquette and things like that that you really develop through martial arts training um, quickly, you know, because we're all going through something that's very difficult and we're going through these physical and mental and emotional things that we train in our martial arts. We're going through those difficulties together and we're supporting yeah. each other through that. And it really opens up a different level of not only connection with yourself, but connection with other people that you're going through that, you know, kind of suffering process with them. Yeah. Um, I think it makes you a little bit more of a connective and a more compassionate person. You know, and um, that's kind of how we try to make sure our training is with Kali Center. You know, like the fighting and the self-defense, that's not really our focus here at Kali Center. You know, that's kind of, we call that like the minimal requirement for training. Yeah. You know, if you want self-defense and fighting skills, you're going to get that. You know, that's that's kind of a given when it comes to, you know, training Kali or training with us or most martial arts, right? Yeah. But it's all those other benefits that go beyond the martial arts that in this day and age are really, I believe, are far more important than just the fighting stuff. You know, the fighting is just mm -hmm. the surface, you know, yeah. and um, you're learning self-confidence, you're learning self-trust, you're learning communication, you're learning problem solving, you're learning how to support other people, 
other people are learning how to trust you. You know, there's a lot of really great benefits. And um, I want Kyle, I want Collie Center in every single household, every campsite, you know, yeah. everybody, everybody in the world, you know. Definitely. And but the Filipino martial arts have much of a philosophical side to it. I know the yeah. Japanese and Chinese would be very heavily influenced with philosophy, but Filipino martial arts be the same. Yeah, that's going to differ from different styles and systems. Like every every style and system kind of has their own take on their own philosophy because yeah. in the Filipino martial arts, it's very – traditionally, they were very family-based or very tribe-based, yeah. right? So every every family, every tribe has a different set of morals and philosophies, virtues, values, all those things, etiquettes and things. So it's going to kind of vary, um, you know. So it's just kind of doing a whole bunch of research and kind of – you know, seeing which one you, you, you like, you know, with Pekiti Tersha, like when I was training in that, you know, I, I kind of like the way that Grant Tuan laid that out. You know, it's like uh, mm -hmm. basic philosophy of Pekiti Tersha is that uh, we believe in life. We don't believe in death. You know, yeah. our life is supreme and we will survive any combat engagement, meaning we'll solve any problem in our life. Yeah. Um, you know, we believe in success. We don't believe in failure. You know, so we will thrive to be successful no matter how long it takes, no matter how much we have to suffer or the difficulty level, you know, the persistence is most important. And uh, also the, uh, you know, we believe in good health. We don't believe in sickness because through the training of Kali, you're going to, you're going to sustain good health. So I do like that philosophy. Um, you know, I, I kind of, just for myself, I have kind of stumbled on my own formula for greatness. Like I, I'm a big believer in virtue. I'm a, you know, my, my own philosophy kind of follows my own virtues, you know, and um, my top three virtues is truth, courage, and leadership, yeah. right? So for me, if something is subjective, it's kind of like more of a value than it is a virtue, yeah. you know, like integrity is very important, but it's subjective, right? Like one day somebody likes you and they're like, oh, you have all this integrity. The next day they don't like you. And then all of a sudden you don't have integrity, but they cannot deny if you are a truthful person, they cannot deny if you have courage or you lack courage and they cannot deny if you're a good leader or not. Right. Or if you are leading your life through leadership, they can have their own opinion if you're a good leader or a bad leader, but they cannot deny if you are leading by truth and courage. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of my own virtues that I kind of lead by, you know, for myself and my own life. And for my students, I always kind of challenge them to, you know, don't copy my virtues and values. Find your own, you know, what's your top three virtues? And, you know, it, it's a challenging question. You know, I, I when I ask people like, what's your top three virtues? You know, a lot of people have a hard time answering that question. Like they don't know. They haven't spent enough time pondering on that and visiting that. Um, that's kind of my... Uh, my own personal take on on the philosophy side so yeah. it's different for everybody as it should be you know so but uh and finally paul how can people get in contact with you and find you online for training it's head over to colliecenter.com k-a-l-i-c-e-n-t-e-r.com colliecenter.com um, we have all of our, you know, online training stuff. We have a lot of different training materials. Um, the best thing to get into is really the Kali Apex. I mean, this is our new thing. It is top notch. Mm -hmm. There's so much that is offered into it at such a ridiculous price. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're kind of, we're actually kind of losing on that. You know, it's a better mm -hmm. deal for, uh, for our practitioners and stuff that are training with us. Uh, but that's kind of how we want it. You know, like we, we want to make sure it's affordable and, and attainable for people to uh, get involved in. Yeah. Um, just head over to colliecenter.com. You know, you can email me straight from there. There's an email form to email me from there. Um, it takes me a little while sometimes to get to my emails just because I get a lot of emails. So the other ways to get a hold of me kind of faster, a little kind of cheat way to do it is to find me on Instagram at colliecenter. Uh, you can also find my other kind of more personal account, which is living on acreage. And if you use that account to DM me, I don't get flooded with a lot of messages on that account. So I usually can get to you a lot faster uh, if you use that account. So Perfect. yeah, sometimes it takes me a couple of weeks to get up, you know, to get through emails and stuff because there's just a lot of them that come in now. I think that's anybody that's on YouTube is the same, really. Like everybody's just, it just seems to be constant emails, but it's, yeah, I suppose it's it's a good sign. But uh, was, and comment on the YouTube channel. You like like if you're watching YouTube videos and stuff like that, you know, 
uh, get, you know, hit that little bell for notifications, you know, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell. So you're notified, especially when I go live, you know, I think a lot of people have been kind of enjoying the live experience because like, you know, I can answer their questions right there. And then you're like, I don't have time to think about the question. Right. It's like, I have to kind of rapid fire it. Yeah. I enjoy that because it's, uh, I enjoy the no prep time, you know? So it's like, even when I'm doing interviews and stuff like that, it's like, People sometimes we were like, Hey, I'll send you a list of questions. I'm like, no, don't even bother. I don't want any prep time. I just want to like, you know, I want this to stay as, as genuine as possible, you know, That's it. but yeah, like e even on YouTube, you know, get the notifications. So that way you're, you're up to date and you can catch me live and, you know, comment in, in the videos and, you know, all that stuff. Cause I read all the comments and, you know, I reply to as many as I can. So yeah. I'm a pretty easy person to, to communicate with. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll put all the links in the description as well when I post this up. And uh, Nice, yeah. It's been an honour having you on, Paul. It was great chatting with you. Yeah, it's been great, man. It was a lot and, of fun. Uh, perfect. And I'm looking forward to the next live stream. I'll probably think of more questions before then. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good, man. Always good. That's it. Right, so all the best. And thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, man. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Talk stay, soon. stay in touch. Will do now.